Okay, sports fans, once more, since I apparently recorded two minutes of video and didn't have the thing on. Um, the failure mode of this transmission, uh, for those of you who haven't been here up to this point, uh, is a circlip that failed in three pieces. Uh, found it down in the oil screen. Uh, my engine definitely would not shift out of first gear, so I tore into it, and the more I tore into it, the more I did not find anything wrong at all. Uh, so, as a result, um, I had to keep tearing it down, tearing it down, finally got down to the transmission, took the transmission apart, and didn't find anything until I started laying the pieces out here, as you see on this paper towel. And I laid them out exactly according to the way the drawing shows it, and noticed in the process of laying these pieces out that I was missing one particular circlip. And you can't be missing a circlip. So I started investigating. I thought maybe it was stuck to one of the gears by, you know, just a little bit of oil or something. Come to find out that it was not present at all. And I went back to the crankcase, started searching again, and this time I found it tucked down in there against the oil screen in a chunk or in several chunks. And uh, so there you go. I am ready to start reassembling this motorcycle. I've got $750 worth of parts uh, that I bought from uh, our friends at Moto City Anthem in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, you can find them online. Uh, and I highly recommend them if you're rebuilding a Cowie. They've got the best prices and pretty daggum good stock level when you consider this is an 06 motorcycle and I'm pretty sure they had everything I needed. Um, the only thing they didn't have, which nobody seems to have, is this fourth gear. If you want this fourth gear, um, if you're needing that fourth gear, if it's gotten damaged like mine did because of the loss of the retaining circlip, the existing gear got pushed out of position. Uh, it chewed on the bushing. The bushing, if I use the original fourth gear here, it's too loose on the shaft. It has too much play to it. Um, the gear itself lists for only like uh, 80 or 90 bucks, if I remember correctly, but it's simply not available. Uh, so the alternative is, what I did, was go to eBay and purchased an entire undamaged transmission uh, from a similar year motorcycle. I think it was one or two years later. Basically, the same transmission has been used for was in use for a decade. Uh, so I went and got that and disassembled it and checked it part by part. And so I'll be reusing uh, the fourth gear out of that, and I think the counter shaft out of that too. I'm not sure which one looks better. I'm going to check it uh, as I do reassembly. Uh, I'm not worried about building a race bike here, so it's just going to be street and. Uh, I'm sure the parts will be sufficient for that. I'm replacing all the bearings, all the circlips, all the spacers, every washer, everything made out of rubber um, is getting replaced because of the age of the bike. There's no point in not doing it. If I'm not going to do it, then I may as well just, you know, have it, you know, taken away to the junkyard. So, anyway, I must stop the video for a second so I can review the uh, procedure, uh, and then I'll restart it once I start putting gears and pieces back onto the shaft and counter shaft. I'll show you the stuff that I'm checking, what I'm looking for, uh, and what you should be looking for as you reassemble it. The big thing here with this job, as it is with any transmission job or any time you go into the heart of an engine, is cleanliness. Don't let little bits of sand and grit and crap uh, build up on your work surface. Uh, I've kept this stuff covered, uh, and what hasn't been covered has just got a light coating of pollen, but even that's going to get wiped away. Uh, as clean as I can get it before I reassemble it. Yes, there's a oil bath that it sits in, and yes, we have a filter on that oil bath, but the cleaner you can get it going back together, the better. One little teeny piece of true sand or grit uh, will do a lot of damage um, on the upper engine uh, when you restart it. Not so much in the transmission, it'll probably just chew it up. Uh, but for the upper engine, you want it as clean as possible. So, I'm going to stop the video for a moment. Uh, get myself squared away for what my task is and the important points I'm going to be checking and then we'll restart it and uh, start putting this bike back together. Who knows, by this time next year I might be back on the road. In checking uh, the old counter shaft 
and the new, excuse me, the old counter shaft and the new, in particular, across the journal where this fourth gear is going to ride. Okay, now I've got a device to check this shaft, almost every reading. 24.77780 so it's probably right at 24.8 in most cases all the way around it the inside of the bushing for the fourth gear for the I'm going to use the one from the uh, 2008 transmission is running yeah 24.74 seems to be about the nominal size 0 0.74 0 0.75 uh, the inside because I have some bore um, measuring tools is right at 24.72 7.3 seven three. so we'll go with 7.3 so that gives me a 0 0.03 0 0.02 uh, clearance if I check the other shaft, the old shaft, it's a different story. Uh, we're looking at uh, 0.04. In some cases, a much smaller shaft. There's a lot more play, and I don't want play. I want it to be as snug as possible. So. I went and got some uh, <clears throat> Lucas High Performance Assembly Lube. It's a semi synthetic. Um, and that's what I'm going to use to ensure that we don't have a dry startup. It's extremely important as you reassemble this stuff, follow the rules. Um, don't take shortcuts and eliminate the lube because you don't feel like running to the auto parts store or um, it's just too much trouble because trouble will be your middle name. If you avoid that lube, you're going to have stuff seizing on you in the first few seconds or moments of use because an oil film hasn't had a chance to develop yet. So you have to use that pre-lube uh, in order to ensure that the startup doesn't kill your engine. And this goes for almost everything you're going to assemble. So, uh, for most of the reviews I read, one four ounce tube of this is enough to do two rebuilds on an automotive engine. So, shouldn't have any difficulties with uh, getting that to be enough um, for a motorcycle engine rebuild. I'm going to check this bore one more time with my tool, and it's very simple. It's a spring-loaded tool. It's two little spring-loaded arms with a locking mechanism. So once you get it set, it locks the little arms in place. Then you measure the arms, and voila, you've got your dimension. Um, and it certainly doesn't hurt to check this, you know, at least a couple of times and just take the average. You're not building a space shuttle, you know, so doesn't have to be that bloody accurate but it should be close okay check that again and what I'm checking I'll hold it up for you here in just a second 24.74 so same as I read before this is the bushing that's going to go inside of my fourth gear like so and then that whole assembly is going to go onto the counter shaft like so uh, so I want to make sure that that journal has got some play. I don't want it to be an interference fit, but that's usually not the problem. The problem is slop. Slapping around, sloppy. So we don't want that. That feels really good. It's freely turning. I can spin that with my finger, but it's not, it's not playing. I, I can't get anything out of it. Even trying to twist it, doing a torsion mo movement um, instead of just back to back there's there's virtually nothing there I mean there's thousands by the time you divide you know 0 0.02 by half 
or 0 0.03, you've got very little play there, which is just enough room to build an oil film, and that's all you want it riding on is an oil film. So, step one, if I remember correctly, is to install a new uh, circlip, a uh, splined washer actually, onto the right end of the counter shaft. Yes. Okay. As mentioned, I'm not too concerned about the toxicity of this stuff, but I'm going to wear gloves and not worry about it at all. How about that? I if I can get my gloves on. Okay. Helps if you open the valve. Okay. So I'm putting a line of it on there and just spreading her thin. When instructions say <clears throat> a thin layer, they mean a thin layer. Most mechanics will tell you, you know, it's bad to have nothing, but it can be almost as bad to have it gooped on there. You want enough to prevent that initial damage when the thing first starts up, and that's all, because you want the engine oil to take over after that. Okay, now it mentions for 2008 on models uh, to be sure to install this bushing so that the um, oil hole in the bushing aligns with the oil hole on the shaft. Now I'm sure that's just for startup purposes because uh, a few seconds after it starts up uh, <laughs> it's going to be in whatever position it wants. There's really nothing to hold it in place in one particular orientation. And then, of course, slide fourth gear <clears throat> onto the main shaft so the engagement dogs, which are these little fellas, face, face out. And before I do that, we put another little dab of assembly lube all the way around the outside of my bushing. There. There goes fourth gear. Lovely. Okay. Yeah, want to fall. Wants to slide apart. And a new snap ring. This should be my plane washer. And that should be my snap ring. Even if the old hardware is in good shape, they strongly recommend that you use all new stuff when you rebuild it. And I heartily concur because you really don't want to be doing this a second time because you didn't want to pony up for a $6 or $7 washer or circlet. That would be unhappiness. And we don't want that. So, okay, and I'm going to need my snap ring pliers for this portion of the festivities. I need to spread that circlip uh, well enough to get on there. I apologize earlier, by the way, because I had my um, coffee cup sitting in the way of production here where you could not see exactly what was being done. Hopefully I'm going to do better at that. There we go, almost. Yep. Okay.
basically I'm just taking the tension off well enough that I can slide it. And then once we get it all the way down here. Okay, so I'm going to try popping this into place into the circlip groove like so. Nope, that works pretty good. All I'm using is a small pry bar here. Smooth as silk. Here's the finished assembly. Washer and circlip are both uh, fully seated. Um, it has almost no play. Almost no play at all. Feels good. Very smooth. Okay. Instructions that now I'm going to start discarding parts so I don't get confused about what's new and what's old. Since I'm going to end up with two transmissions here, I will probably end up rebuilding uh, with the old parts on the old shaft just as a, an emergency backup rather than toss it. Uh, I may be able to get, to get the bushing uh, to replace in this fourth gear that's not in good shape. Uh, if I can do that, then I could actually reassemble a good transmission out of it because there's really nothing else wrong with it. So these are the uh, rings out of the new 2008 transmission uh, that I got from eBay. So I'm just going to set those aside, a little pile there. Uh, next thing we want is the uh, second, third gear combination gear. Um, and inspecting these, uh, I'm looking at the corners of the dogs. Um, there is a tiny amount of rounding. Actually, that almost looks like it came out of the foundry that way. Now, some of these teeth have a little more rounding than others. And if I compare the two, that's from the eBay. So all things being equal, I know that most likely an 08. Transmission has less wear on it than an 06, so I'll go with the 08, uh, especially since this is the 08's counter shaft, so, uh, excuse me, main shaft. This is the uh, 08's main shaft, so we'll go with putting the originals back on their original uh, shaft. So let me put just a dabble, do ya, of uh, lube in a couple of spots. And then I'll just run the gear back and forth to distribute that. Once I get her on, second, third combo gear onto the splines. Run that back and forth. And then I'm going to shift it one tooth or a couple teeth and do it again to make sure that I didn't miss any of the splines as far as getting lube on it. That has a nice, nice feel to it. No play, beauty. Moving on. Next is going to be the. Uh, oh, and I should point out when you do this, if it wasn't clear, the larger diameter gear of the two faces the fourth gear. Okay. Uh, next is going to be the. Um, Next is going to be fifth gear on the main shaft. So it's flat side faces out away from the second third combination. So it has both a uh, flat side like so and an indented side. You can clearly see that. Uh, 
hit that with just a little teeny bit of lube. There's already lube on the shaft. So that should pop right on for us. Beautiful. Spins freely. Okay. Then we have two uh, two washers to go on. Two of these they almost look like a mud washer. And I believe I'll have to check my um, stock of parts here. I think I may have bought new ones of those. Um, in fact, there they are. Except the new ones that I purchased, if you look, they're smaller. The diameter, the ID is the same. It's the OD that's different. The outer diameter. Here's the 06. And there's the 08. So this gives you a bigger thrust surface. Uh, I'm going to guess that the larger thrust surface is certainly not going to hurt anything. Yeah, I see what they did. They created a, yeah, the play is the same. What they did was they created um, a cover for this slightly indented uh, void space. Okay, with the new washer. That's going to be completely covered. With the old washer, it was exposed. Um, so, well, partially covered, I should say. It's leaving about a, a little less than a two millimeter berm that's open. So, what the advantages to that, I don't know. But I think we'll go with that. Since that was the later engineering change, we're going to hope that the engineers at Cowie uh, got better at this as they went along. So, little dab of lube and we'll go ahead and put these on spin it a little okay and there we go Grand Central Station the driveway is so busy Okay, and then I believe my needle bearing is going to go on. Here's the old needle bearing, and here's the new.